right now it feels like it's kind of like rock paper scissors like you know in scrims we, we beat one team another team beats us and then we hear that they beat the other team it's like who's the best we don't know hello and welcome back for our next ma next sunday matchup excuse me team liquid versus tsm a who's classic. the best <laughs> we don't know. We don't know. Well, with that, it's time to take a look at who's battling it out today, selecting blue side. It is Team Liquid. In the top lane, Impact. In the jungle, Ix Smithy. In the mid, Pobelta. Bot double lift, support Ole. And their coach, Kane. And challenging them on the red side will be TSM. In the top lane, Hanser. In the jungle, Grig. Mid lane, Bjergsen. Bottom Sven. Support Mithy and coach Song. And this is uh, one of the games that will determine, you know, who is the best technically, right? Both these teams are two and one right now. So whoever wins will be tied at the top of the standings here at the end of the week. Yeah, gonna be tied with someone. Someone. <laughs> There's a pretty <laughs> big tie going on last game though. We mentioned 100 Thieves having a wake up call after week one. And for Team Liquid, it seems like they took their loss against Golden Guardians very much to heart. Yeah, we did see Team Liquid um, winning versus CLG yesterday. They had a, an excellent draft. I felt like they put more time after that loss to Golden Guardians uh, in week one into the preparation and into their work, you know, coming in this week. So uh, definitely really liked a lot of the counter picks that were coming through in multiple stages, you know, in multiple lanes. And we'll see how it, how it unfolds and plays out for them this time. But uh, definitely a good resurgence. We'll see what the plan to break out against TSM, though, is who suffered yet another loss against Clutch Gaming. That's right. TSM's one loss is a little bit more recent here. Just yesterday, Clutch again was able to take them down. Uh, and TSM, they actually had opportunities for comebacks in that game. They, yes, they made an early game mistake once again, you know, invading on the blue side and splitting up. Uh, but they had the opportunity there with Grig, with a hero Nocturne ultimate into Steel Baron, uh, buying them a lot of time. Still, though, even with that Baron Steel that was able to get them to basically reset that stage of the game, they lost multiple five versus four team fights uh, due to Febiv and Hakuo uh, really outplaying them hard. Uh, so we'll have to see about TSM this time around. Are they still going to uh, pick some more scaling compositions? And will they, again, you know, make these early invades in the early game that kind of make them play out the slower mid game and slower late games that uh, people have really become accustomed to seeing with this team. And I think Liquid, when they win, they tend to win pretty quickly, especially Investor 1. So we'll see what they have prepared here versus TSM. They banned the Nocturne, taking that one away from Grig. They banned Swain as well, who has put in some flashiness. In fact, TSM felt the brunt of Forbidden Swain yesterday. <laughs> but certainly when it's picked, it seems pretty good. Uh, Tolia and Jax also banned away. So huh. a lot of different stuff. Yeah, the Jax is the most interesting one to me because, you know, the, yes, that is a, a jungle pick as well as, as a top lane pick, but it hasn't been an as, of especially high priority. So it must be something either from scrims or a specific counter pick that they're trying to get off of the table for themselves. Um, and, and we'll definitely have to keep an eye on that one because uh, it is a little bit out of the ordinary as far as the common bands right now. Zoe is not, though, and Team Liquid do ban that as their third one, taking it off the table from Bjergsen. And we'll see what TSM have in store. Do they pick something a little more standard, or do they have some other research they've already done? We'll find out in five seconds as TSM line up their last ban of Phase 1. Yeah. We also, I, I really like the matchup between these what? two teams. That's Malphite. So this is the second Malphite ban we've seen. We saw, okay. we saw another one. Um, so it has definitely been used in scrims and you know, you're laughing because like we don't see him that often But this is a champion um, So much armor uh, with the passive now and the shield It's a very simplistic champion where you have a guaranteed hard engage uh, and it is definitely uh, Difficult for teams to play, you know, a lot of either AD focus into or a lot of um, Just even auto as attackers into it and then kind of the similarity there with the, the Jackson Malphite. So definitely a targeted last two bands there from TSM. Uh, very curious to see what the surprise is going to be. If it will be just a single crazy pick or if it will be an entire strategy uh, that they are guarding against. Regardless though, the Fiora, uh, definitely a very good pick. And Poe Belter actually had a very good showing on the Fiora, or on the Aurelia, mm -hmm. excuse me, uh, Aurelia uh, yesterday as far as the mid lane play. Bjergsen also looked pretty good on the champ, so a nice takeaway there. One of the mm -hmm. stronger 
mostly mid lane, but you can move it around if you like to bot or top lane. Rakana and Aatrox are the first two picks for TSM. All right, so Aatrox definitely going to be happy there after the two guard bands. I believe those are what the uh, you know Jackson Malphite were kind of guarding against and allows Hanser to be in a carry position. And I feel like Hanser, as we said so many times uh, on different actually iterations even of TSM rosters, he does get overlooked sometimes. And especially when a lot of people are you know playing more of the tanks from the top side. Uh, but he is such a strong candidate, you know, especially as uh, North American talent um, for carrying this team. So we'll see about the Aatrox from the top side because the bottom side for Team Liquid uh, just got very spicy. Love the uh, Morgana counter pick, <laughs> and Kaiser has been a staple basically since release, and Double Lift is no stranger to winning on that champion. Yeah, the Morgana, we often see it into Rakan, Black Shield uh, on your carry to try and protect against that engagement and allow either the Irelia or the Kaiser there uh, to freely move throughout the team fight. Again, though, here, TSM actually at racking up another support for the Lulu for themselves. Might be in the hands of Bjergsen. Could definitely be swapped around. Uh, but Rakan, as well as Lulu, uh, a very potent kind of double support combination here that uh, applies the hard engage as well as being able to protect and even sometimes supplement uh, melee carries. Like, a Lulu can very easily just work with an Aatrox, you know, give him the extra attack speed, give him the knockup when he goes in for a double knockup off of Q. Yeah, I was kind of ready for whatever Bjergsen's Aurelia counter pick was, but it might just be a Lulu to try and neutralize Mundo, though continuing the trend of top lane tank bans by TSM. Again, trying to protect Haunter's Aatrox, and there's Zaya banned away. Definitely an option there for Zven with Kaiser taken off the table. And TSM, one more top lane ban? Yeah, oh, and why not? Take him down as well. All right, impact. Uh, those are, I feel like, are more, more impact focused. Uh, bands here as you know in the first round we were kind of debating the Jax and the Malphite and now definitely here uh, they don't want uh, you know him on one of those more secure feeling champions we every time we see impact on a carry we're kind of like ah, you know he can pull it off but you know how successful our team liquid going to be uh, if he's not on one of those tanks to try and create some room for whoever is piloting the Kai'Sa whether it is double lift you know, or Pro Belter, I guess. Yep. Trundle also banned away, so different jungler here for Grig. I'm really trying to think about what marksmen are left. Maybe Lucian, is Grig actually going to go back to Olaf? Kevin, he's uh, shown up well on already during his time in the summer. Yeah, definitely a, a very forward-facing composition here from TSM so far. Has uh, a lot of charge buttons as they're looking to dive into whatever Team Liquid are are gonna pull out. Uh, Kaisa definitely is gonna have a target on her back. Maybe Renekton for impact? Hit more of a bruiser, yep. Gonna take the fight to Haunts in the 1v1. Takes All a right. Renekton and rounding out here by X Smithy. Played a lot of Sedwani, so certainly a strong option. Did receive some buffs in this patch. Yeah, it should be a pretty standard then set up there from Team Liquid. Uh, you know, the only kind of wrinkle is Aurelia being a mid laner now who's been played so often in the mid lane. Uh, is a small, a little bit of a different look, but you, you know, you're looking for that kill pressure. And it definitely can happen on things like Lulu if that is going to be the matchup. Uh, besides that, though, probably going to be Double Lift and Ole in the bottom with that. Kaisa and Morgana. There's the lock in. There are multiple melee champions here, again, for the Sedge wanting to work with mm -hmm. to stack up those stuns. Uh, so probably going to be playing off those solo lanes once again. All right, well, they could have played all but one standard game, and they lost horribly to Golden Guardians uh, when they I, did. I have Vladimir. Non-standard. Bot lane TSM, I believe, have played all standard so far, and with an Ezreal being hovered as the last pick here, certainly plenty of good marksman options left for Sven. He's played Varus already. We know that both these players are known Lucian players. I mean, Kaiser, I think, is the one you want the most, but we'll take Ezreal when you can get him, and that will be the option here for Sven. Good old Sven Ezreal. He was getting flamed last split for picking it so much, but definitely uh, works well with Rakan. Uh, and we'll have to see about the early jungle presence, because Grig on the Olaf, I feel like he should be able to um, you know, move up and try and control some early scuttles. And we'll see how this fight over the solo lanes does go with four bands from TSM being poured into Impact. You know, this is definitely something that Impact is used to having a lot of bands thrown his way, but it's definitely been focused and pushed onto this Renekton Aatrox matchup. I think in general, it's interesting to see the, with the way TSM are drafting, how much 
leeway Haunter is being given in this game. You know, he's on a good melee fighter in Aatrox. Sven is taking more of a, you know, a, a good scaling marksman, but not one that, like, screams, oh, like, I'm a Kog'Maw or a Kai'Sa, let me hyper carry. Like, Bjorks is playing Lulu. That should tell you about how little he's focusing on his individual performance this game and is maybe trying to buff up his teammates a bit more. And I, again, I really like Lulu buffing up Aatrox. Like, Aatrox scales so well with attack speed. Uh, the knockup, he'll be in perfect placement for it to get bonus not only out of the knockup part of it, but also the extra health when Aatrox is low. Uh, you know, that little bit of extra health, meaning the difference between like proccing his passive and getting him out of, uh, uh, you know, his uh, empowered state with the extra attacks. I feel like Dirksen should be using a lot of it on him, whereas Ezreal, like you're saying, is a good target, you know, if he's getting dove to, for some of those support skills, but not necessary. Well, we'll have to see. It's a big matchup here between two semi-rivals, I suppose. Team Liquid, our defending champions versus TSM for many, many, many time champions. Oh, baby. All right, so we have a Morgana, so there's possibility of bindings flying around early. You have to always be a little bit more careful. Looks like both teams will just be spreading out into the defensive openings, though, and just watching the river entrances. Always, though, have to keep in mind when there's an Olaf on the table, can go for those power moves, can go for the invades, try and push you off the buff. Doesn't look like it's going to happen here, though, as Bjergsen also playing very far up on the Lulu. Yep, looking for some poke here and there. Sven also looking for some, but ooh, double lift. Gets the first little bit. He's going to win out this trade. Sven wants some gold. Klepto Brocken. Might not be worth it, actually. Double lift looks for the plasma brock. Get a fire! Oh! Forcing Man. the flash away. He got a sly sack of gold. I don't know how sly it was. He almost had to die for it. And as you said, burned his flash. I don't know. So in those situations, because double lift knows he's got his last auto and the Q coming off. I mean, nah, that was that was definitely playing it uh, as close to the line as you can get there for Sven. At least for his sake, he can be like, hey, guys, at least my Klepto, you know, I did get a gold a little bit. Uh-huh, uh-huh. See if it's worth, though, if, uh, you know, any early pressure down bottom lane results in some denial. Remember, here on Rivalry Sunday, it is most important to swear your allegiance spam either TL or TSM in the Twitch chat. And I will let you know who's winning based on how well you spam. Oh, YouTube chat as well. There you go. Anywhere you are, spam it. You can create Twitter, a spirit Facebook bomb status. in whatever chat uh -huh, uh -huh. you choose. Make a sign, hold that up in the arena, yell it out in your house, tell your dog, whatever it is. Ooh, nice binding. All right, Ben is uh, most damage received in this game <laughs> so far by a mile. By Taylor winning the vote. <laughs> double lifted all late. Kind of forcing some defensive posturing here. We'll see how Ben and Mythic can get through, but they are real good at just kind of chugging through lanes. Some way, somehow. Team Liquid, unsurprisingly. They do want to get an aggressive early as Bjergsen get the lane pushing in, poking Pobelta onto his turret. Really, uh, very good. But uh, perhaps vulnerable to his early harass from Bjergsen. Great stun, though. They're not going to follow up with a Q, unfortunately. Yeah, he got Bjergsen got the slow off there right before it landed. Uh, so Pobelter, even during the stun duration, couldn't get close enough to go for a trade. I don't know if he would have uh, really even wanted to as the minion wave was also arriving, but a little interaction there. You can see here from the early levels, Renekton notoriously strong early, uh, especially with press the attack still. Uh, since your W not only stuns, but applies, you know, counts as double autos, you can easily get the three proc. This one, he definitely wants to go in. Uh, he's got the W there, full about to go for the trade and pushing the wave. Uh, nicely for himself. Great poly there from Bjergsen, but looks like Scuttlecrab instead gonna go over to double lift. Yeah, so nice to have a support with a uh, hard CC yeah. ability to be able to take these crabs as a pushing bottom lane. So double lift and Ole rewarded for you know all of their damage that they were able to deal to Sven early on and kind of bully him around and push up their lane um, with the extra money from the Scuttle Crab. And that means both Scuttle Crabs controlled by Team Liquid. With uh, Grig there on the Olaf, just hard farming his jungle camps. Olaf's very good at it. You can start your own blue, you can just power through all of them. See the pressure continues. Ole hits a binding that Mithy ducked away from, so he hits Ven instead. Now the tower's starting to take a couple of pot shots as well. Ole collecting max value. 
Beautiful support item. And again, damage Ooh. back and up. Just an easy kill on Timothy. Guardian was down and he couldn't flash anywhere. This is such a one-sided uh, match here in the bottom side. It seems like Team Liquid are just slugging TSM bottom lane members in the face over and over. Eventually, Ole lands another binding and they just drops. And Ole again zoning, misses that binding, but just forcing Sven off the wave. Yeah, let's get another replay here. Ole again. Uh, you know, he has played Morgana for quite a long time. He was landing bindings previously on Sven. This one right in the face of Mithy and double lift. Instant reaction, W, a uh, couple autos, and the Q there is enough to take down the Rakan for first blood. And remember, Sven still does not have his flash. Mithy did save his, but Ole didn't even need Ignite to finish off that kill. So the TL pressure will continue here in the duo lane. Ah, uh, it is. Must feel good there for double lift, oh, right? Yes. <laughs> Kicked off a of TSM, replaced by the European duo. Absolutely slamming them this game. But again, he's one of the biggest, most outspoken AD carries as far as, all right, you know, laning phase is one thing, um, but it is so much about how you're going to be able to play with your team. And all that matters is the W in the end. Team Liquid off to a good start. Thousand gold ahead due to all this bot lane pressure. Yeah, and it feels super nice to have a Kai'Sa. Not a, you don't even need to send extra gold into this Kai'Sa. Double Lift is just earning extra gold for himself. We you know one of the best scaling champions that we have in the entire game. Uh, this is not you know a smite mid Kai'Sa. Oh, we're gonna give him all these jump camps and the mid lane. No, he's just gonna you know do it the old fashioned way. Yeah. Kill his kill lane opponents. Champions. Certainly, it's a classic. The impact still getting good damage down here with the Haunter. Both Ding six. Haunter a bit behind in farm, but will catch up. Should be about a way behind. Gets all those minions. Still the pressure mounts here in the bot side though. Double lift in all eight. No reason to do anything other than push. Yeah, double lift. Most gold in the game easily after the first blood. Plenty of CS for himself as well. And Team Liquid, yeah, they'll be very happy to keep this game uh, on its current trajectory. Interesting uh, Rome here though with the level six Aurelia. They've got a lot of crowd control. Grig is in the area, but might not even be enough. Once has no passive, just a flash. Dark flights away. Gonna have to flash. Does get out of the way. No ult from Xmithy, but the flash is. There's the Vanguard's edge. Haunter gonna pop the Matsuka, and his passive does not proc. It's Impact that gets it. Yeah, most definitely will not be enough, as they're easily able to take him down. Uh, Team Liquid winning both sides of the map. Nice roam. Uh, meet up here from Smithy and Poe Belter. Old Immortals duo uh, that were picked up in tandem for this squad coming down. It was the level six already attained for Pobelter, so he doesn't even throw out uh, an E that could miss. You're just gonna nail him with the uh, old flash right there and instantly stack up stuns. No recourse there for Hanser. Had already used his flash, already used his dark flight. And Team Liquid, oh my oh, god! Oh, Binding Ignite down again! There's the Killer Instinct! Double is looking for it! Oh, wait! Gets the credit on the end for the Ignite, and Sven also takes a big chunk. I mean, after the first two games of the day that we had that were so back and forth, Team Liquid... Seems like they're saying we're having none of that. And this is Infernal Drake on top of how hard they are winning both sides of the map here. Uh, that is going to make it, you know, difficult. As CSM are like, okay, well, guys, we've got to farm for late now. You know, try not to die anymore. We're just trying to farm up at our turrets. Team Liquid are not going to allow, you know, that, that recourse for them. There's going to be no extra time in this game for them to farm up. And it's not like they've got super crazy scaling to rely upon later. It's also not like TSM are even the ones maybe overplaying some of these early situations and getting themselves into places when they need to wait and scale. Teal are just... Outclassing yeah. here in the Ole, game. Ole's just sniping him right now. I mean, throws out another binding right here. He moves up through the minion wave. I don't know, Mithy tries to answer him with a Q there from Rakan. Um, I mean, throwing out that skill shot at the same time, that is not going to be a good trade uh, if they both land. And Bjergsen now is the next target. Gets collapse stun, cleanses out, pops a wild growth on himself. Great. Great. Ragnarokking up, out. Probelt up, trying to dodge back around. Bjergsen with a watch. As Greek is able to get a kill on the board for TSM. Much needed answer here from TSM to put a stop to this bleeding as Grig finally makes his presence felt. Shows up on Olaf, runs straight through, protects Bjergsen, and Bjergsen does have to use the stopwatch. That was very close to being a one-for-one -one as Pobelter went back in, but 
Uh, that mastery does deny the gold and experience there for two Team Liquid as Bjergsen timely stopwatch uses. Anyways, here's how it started. Goes in for the ward clear. Um, there he sees Smithy roaming around the top side. Grig arrives just in time. They do see the stacks there from Sejuani, and so that's Poe Belter tried to go back in for the burst damage, but Poe Belter was able to immune it with his stopwatch usage. Get, uh, you know, TSM a little something back in this game. Nice catch from Grig as well. Sejuani holds straight to the face. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> not getting that one around me. Yep. Ragnarok popped up, so he didn't really feel that one. No, well played 2v2 there for TSM. So, uh, some kill go over in their direction. Well, and again, still under fire, but finally pushing the lane in their direction. Yeah, and I would say for uh, TSM side, they have to start trying to count their blessings. At least the bottom lane kills were, were over to Ole, and he was the one getting the last hits on them, so not all of the money was funneled into double lift. But despite that, uh, double lift still does have the most gold in the entire game uh, because of the CS work that they're doing down there, and of course the assist still do give that percentage. Um, so even without that, could be worse. <laughs> we'll see if it gets worse. There's all like another nice binding double if returning to lane. You see Greg here just chilling out. Waiting for Poe Belter to maybe leap forward onto that cannon creep. A little too close now. Sun looks for it, doesn't get it. Bjergsen instead just peppers him with a Picks empowered autos. This is a high percentage play, even though we're saying, oh yeah, Grig was just sitting in that bush for, for quite a long time. It's a pretty high percentage play to wait and brush around those matchups. Flash off from LA, pops a black shield on himself. Doesn't get any other cooldowns, but. Yeah, actually, that's, that was a good uh, evasive maneuvers from Mithy and from uh, the TSM duo. He doesn't have to spend any flash. That's Ole's flash down. Uh, this bottom lane that has been kind of a punching bag. Uh, does kind of get the upper hand in this exchange, and you know, no flash on the Morgana post level six is actually a decent, decently big win for them. Final break in 2,000 gold though. It's the lead for Team Liquid, so it's still looking good here. As Haunter in a very big CS hole in the top side, his tower also pretty low. Yeah. Counterpick working out real nice for Impact despite full bands. Yeah, Impact here on the Renekton, bullying him around. Got a little bit of help from the roam of Cobelter and Smithy there to get the kill early, and he, you know, Impact was the one to get the kill credit on that, which uh, was able to fund his early Black Cleaver. But man, once this turret drops as well, the map kind of explodes for Team Liquid. They have the front line of, you know, Sejuani, Aurelia, and Renekton that are just diving forward, looking for those kills, stacking multiple stuns, you know, all of them bringing those stuns uh, to front. And once these outer turrets start to drop, uh, for TSM is really when the floodgates open and they allow the offensive calls here for Team Liquid to take place. Speaking of which, though. Yep, they're both the flashes early. Oh, wait, there with a great black shield. May have saved his teammates still. Trying to run up. Got no crap. Gets a slow that is going to be enough. Hope Belter going to try and buy some time. Greek, though, picks up TSM's second kill. Yeah, the speed boost shrine, not quite enough. TSM keep up the chase. And they do get another kill for themselves. So even though they lose their bottom turret, and Double Lift, as you can see, is pushing all the way up to the secondary turret, TSM need to get gold wherever they can. So getting another kill onto Poe Belter uh, is at least getting some scraps back for themselves. Double Lift's gold lead, though, continues to grow. He got solo turret gold after that. Thanks to all the pressure they got. Impact is going to make it two turrets to zero. He cleans up the top turret as well. Blue buff, not going to get stolen. Bjergsen. Does secure it for himself, but just with the Rage Blade now finished, Double Lift on his own is applying so much pressure. Yep, side lane's definitely doing a lot of work here for Team Liquid. Meanwhile, we're gonna have TSM still trying to get someone with a decent amount of damage items to be able to, you know, make some, some better team plays for themselves. Ben right now, trying to work it up here on the Ezreal. He does have the Sheen burst damage, as well as working to transform towards Muramana on the Ezreal. Um, but Hanser up there on top side has been full defensive mode. Ever since the, the early stages of the game, buying health crystals and armor for himself to not give over any more kills to impact side. 
TL. Now just gonna take this Rift Herald out. TSM, I don't think they have really a fight to play for, but Greg and Jerks are not collapsing on the objective. Yeah, right now Team Liquid made the call to have Pogo or Split Push. He does not have teleport. This is a mid lane Ignite Aurelia uh, that is split pushing on the bottom side. So that's why TSM, even being down uh, in the state of the game right now, are able to push them off the Rift Herald. Still, though, even with seeing that Aurelia and knowing that it's a 5v4, they aren't able to like take the Rift Herald for themselves uh, because they are in such a dangerous spot right now. And Team Liquid still have control over the neutral objectives in this map. Easily rotate over to the Dragon and pick this one up first. Yep, easy Drake for themselves. Like Smithy not even needed for his smite. Yeah, Team Liquid will collect it. And again, we talk about, you know, kind of where TSM are putting some of their power. In Haunter in the top side, in Zven on his Ezreal in the bot. Those two laners are at least a thousand gold behind their counterparts. Bjergsen is the only one, even he's on Lulu this time around. Cool. To be fair, he's got to finish Morello, so something a bit different, but he's at least getting his farm. But TSM are going to have to wait a number of minutes to, I think, find something a little closer to even. Yeah, they've got one outer turret left to huddle around and try and defend the mid. Definitely the most important, but it still makes it difficult. As you can see, all their vision in defensive positions right now to try and, uh, you know, see any of these Team Liquid moves coming. Regardless, though, if we're throwing up, Team Liquid, very easy for them to just take another neutral objective without actually having confrontation. Yeah. You know, Bjergsen is bottom this time, so they see the mid laner that doesn't have teleport also down there. And signals, you know, easy rift herald for them to pick up. Team Trucks ran through at his ult, but I don't think he was aiming there. Bjergsen is trying to get a turret back for TSM, so at least will open up something and give his team back gold. Good but, trade. But that Rift Herald is probably going to mean that mid outer is going to go down. So TL are more than happy with what's transpiring. Bjergsen does take down the bot outer turret. Mm. I was wondering if Team Liquid would hold on to this Rift Herald longer uh, to wait and see if they would get a pickoff somewhere and get another kill somewhere. Because you can easily get two turrets with it if you first get a kill. Uh, but yeah, as you said, they just want to get the entire outer ring down as quickly as possible to try and move in and move up the ward lines uh, into the deeper vision for themselves. Yeah, checking in with kind of where people are at as far as itemization. Pogelta, Trinity Force Rush, feeling happy there. And looks like Impact, with the Black Cleaver already done, working oh. on maybe JA or probably Essence Reef. <laughs> and double lift here with the 193 yep, CS good. already with the Nasher's Plutz. Uh, plus Rage Blade for himself. He didn't have that on a check, by the way. He has, oh my god, he has exactly 100% attack speed with the extra dagger that he bought uh, at level 10. That feels so good to just perfectly hit your evolution. 16 minutes into the game, he already not only has the, the Rage Blade uh, passive stacking up, but he can go invisible in these team fights as well. Team Liquid definitely feel like they're ready to fight, even though it's so early in the game. Um, and they're, they're taking their, doing their due diligence, you know, moving up their ward line first, being, uh, you know, good boys, doing their homework. Yep. Double Lift, though, has already shown his willingness to fight from level one. So now at level 11 with rank two ulti, will not be afraid of starting an altercation as TSM. Still have to play defensive for, let's call it at least 10 minutes, Kobe. All right. We can definitely call it 10 minutes. They they're always have your eye open, you know, for uh, an opportunity to punish a mistake, but definitely true as far as them being the ones to start it off. A Rakan still explosive champion. Uh, you know, you can punish mistakes very quickly if a member of TSM moves out of position away from Ole and away from the Black Shield. Does it look like that's happening? Uh, you know, as of yet though, as Team Liquid moving as four members to make sure that nobody gets picked off while they're removing this vision. Nice from McSmithy to not commit his ultimate. I thought Zven had been caught by another Ole Dark Binding, but not to be this time around as Bjergsen is trying to flush Pobelta out of the top lane. I mean, TL, I think they would maybe think about an early Baron, but it's not even up Ooh. yet for a minute 45. Well, they are calling impact over on the Renekton, uh, having him move up. So they might actually just try and uh, brute force one of these secondary turrets. Hunter on Aatrox for TSM, just trying to shove the wave as long as possible until, you know, Team Liquid force a dive or something, and which he would try and teleport. Great pop Predator actually jukes around the Aurelia stun. Doesn't have to use the ultimate, but Team Liquid, right. no wave left to try and siege. Nice little move there from Grig, actually. But still, Double Lift is so strong. Yeah. I mean, 
Uh, Team Liquid also still just kind of fishing for some bindings here. Uh, Ole's had such good accuracy so far that, you know, why not move up and look for a couple more of the secondary turret. If they don't see, if you know, if none of them land, then they just back right off. Uh, Impact can get back down to bottom in time to catch the wave and get it pushing again. In time for the Baron. 45 seconds on that one. But another Infernal Drake coming up. I always like to take the Infernal Drake first. You know, before we rotate over to Baron, even if there's a, you know, 30 to 40 second discrepancy in the spawn timer, because if you mess up the Baron fight, uh, then, uh, you know, there's a lot more left on the map for the other team to take. Yeah, bad things happen. It's not great when you lose your Infernal, and it makes Baron easier. Oh! oh it's an impact! Finds a stone to his van, the ult, though, <laughs> not fast enough. Yeah, I don't know if they are quite on the same page there. What you would want to do, uh, obviously, would have Renekton stun, immediate Sejuani ultimate. Uh, to lock him up, but they're gonna be able to push on mid anyway. Yeah, enough pressure to take down yet another turret. Team Liquid make it four to one in turret as Grig finally eats a magnetic binding. <laughs> it's a special ability unlocked by Ole and yeah. the, uh, the experienced Morgana players. Double is channeling in front of an axe. He's gonna have to delay that recall timer. Infernal Drake is up in 15 seconds, so. Mm -hmm. We'll see if TSM can maybe sneak in and grab it. Double if does have TP though. Ooh. He's gonna have to be quick about it. Yeah, he's gonna use it here. Team Liquid know they're gonna try and rush for it, but can they even stop it? TSM have all five members in place. Well, good vision as well. They've cleared it all out, looking for someone. W doesn't find any. If he so, he's gonna get in there. Might just go for the steal, start the team fight oh. after. He grabs it and gets out. It's Smithy turns the trick again. Why even question it? As soon as you see Smithy on the map by the objective, it's like, oh, wait a second. That is that is not your dragon, my friend. Makes it look so easy, just slipping in for the steal, pre-casts his W on Sejuani, moves in with a smite combo, and snags it away. Well, now it's Baron to worry about. This Infernal Drake Oink. has been picked up by Team Liquid for three total Drakes. TSM getting shut Man. out of the big monsters on the map so far. Yeah, TSM just getting bullied this whole game. Feels like Team Liquid, you know, they give him a little bit of hope there, then ah, steal his lunch money. No Infernal for you. And now it is double stacked uh, Infernals on top of the Ocean Drake and control, uh, you know, over the vision around Baron. Still kind of waiting for TSM to wake up here. Two kills that TSM did get were both on Grig, on the Olaf, which is not a great late game scaling champion. You know, he's put that money towards some defenses, does have the adaptive helm, but that's not gonna, you know, help them survive that much longer in these team fights. And it, it does look, you know, pretty dire here for TSM. I think the confidence that Liquid are displaying right now is the truly impressive thing to me. This was how, when they were dominating in the back half of the spring, and the, Onto their eventual finals run, which they swept. It was this kind of play. Very calculated, very confident, and just kind of knew what to do at every stage of the game. As Impact looking for a solo kill onto Haunter, he's gonna get the passive. Impact needs a little bit more charging on some Fury, but Haunter trying to fight. Oh, not oh. enough as Impact takes him down. I mean, yeah, they're, they're just not, not able to fight back here. Polymorph goes down onto Smithy. That's just gonna delay the tower pushing. Impact with his solo kill onto Haunter gets free time down on bottom side. And that is going to put more pressure cross map on the Baron. Aptly named Call the Meek there from Impact. Haunts are just nothing to fight with here. TL growing that gold lead about 6k now. And with all this pressure from Impact with his teleport, this yeah. is an easy avenue for TL to start Baron if they want to. I mean, we've been talking so much about uh, all the changes that went in this year and you know, Team Liquid spending all this money in the offseason and completely turning around. Uh, the squad with all these new members, all stars, you know, finishing number one last split. This looks like total domination of one of the teams that's supposed to be their rivals. And uh, you talk about the confidence of the players. Also, if you pay attention to social media, uh, you know, Steve Liquid has actually been very confident as well. Put it out well ahead of time, well ahead of the match, by the way. Um, you know, a little bit of trash talk towards towards Reggie and, and towards uh, TSM as they're able to 
also back up the trash talk so far in this game. It, it's only 23, uh, you know, almost 24 minutes into the game, but it's, it's been such a one-sided affair uh, that it doesn't seem like, uh, you know, TSM have have much to say about it. Yeah, and right now Liquid again just giving double it's a bit more farm, getting Vision back around the Baron. He's got a lot of gold to spend. When All right. wants to go back. Well, we got to look at it from the difficult exactly. perspective here. Because what it, can TSM do? For exactly. They, they've drafted this Lulu Kron, you know, they have uh, two supportive champions on their side. And they have the possibility, you know, of a quick engage, but they've been spread out and they've been dominated on both sides of the map. So they haven't really had a chance to bring that together. You know, Ezreal there, Sven, uh, does have his Trinity Forces. Muramana has transformed. Uh, but they really are going to have to use some surprise tactics here to be able to get themselves an opening. And Team Liquid, they've been very good at kind of holding hands here, removing the opportunity for TSM to punish, uh, you know, anyone being out of position. So they just continue to move through the jungle as a group uh, and take away those openings. Yeah, it's going to be ooh, cool before at best, given how much pressure Impact has in his side lane, his double if able to steal away TSM's blue. Once again, TSM rush back towards the Baron pit because they know they need to check it with no vision. Well. But now the buys have come out. I think Double is going to spend a big chunk of money soon. He's got almost 2,300 gold left. So he's going to hit the recall button. Yeah. That's what he goes back for because whatever's about to happen is real tough for TSM. Definitely going to be tough. Uh, Aatrox does at least have Rage Blade plus Titanic completed. So. Some core items, just uh, not as many as the Team Liquid members, because Double if you mentioned, three now. His Mercurial's been upgraded. This Kai'Sa is definitely fully online for Team Liquid, and TSM are going to have to find a way to put a stop to it. Now they've been grouped up. Stacked together. Just need to find a good angle for this initiation. Look at Mithy, see what he can get done. Look for Forza maybe with a big flank. Team Liquid all grouped here in mid. TSM, I think, knowing that this is one of their few opportunities coming up to try and take something back away from Team Liquid. Mm -hmm. All right, 35 seconds here on the Mountain Drake. If Team Liquid easily take this one up, which it looks like they do, because you can see the recalls being channeled from TSM. Uh, you know, in the state of the game right now, they can't really force a five on five uh, straight out without a surprise initiation or, or something like that. Uh, so with this Mountain Drake, uh, if it does go over to Team Liquid, again, they're the ones. Kaisa is so good at taking Baron already since her passive, uh, you know, percentage damage and Rage Blade stacks up so quick. But now they're going to have side lane pressure. They can push both side lanes first. Oh, actually, TSM are making their big move. Yeah, they see an opportunity. Oh, Mithy's way too far forward. Ole, he's going to look. Here's X Mithy, maybe trying to tag Haunts up, but. He flies over the wall. Impact over the big PP flying. Burns the ultimate. Now gonna move back in. The ult is good. But I think the Ragnarok may have kind of stopped most of it. Yeah. Impact went for the stun onto Olaf there, actually. And Grig just pops his ult. Runs on out. Hope there from Double Lift though. Does land in onto Grig. Still the Mountain Drake up for the taking. Impact gonna go back bot side. Make sure they have priority there. So this Drake will go over to Team Liquid. But TSM get out from the trap that Liquid set. Yeah, they get out, buy themselves some more time, but at what cost? And now the Mountain Drake puts so much more pressure on burning down Baron. And again, Team Liquid have priority over every single lane. They can push out the side waves first and force TSM to come to them. And that's the thing, right? It's very slow here from Team Liquid in the mid game because they know all they have to do is not make mistakes, play the clean, disciplined game they showed off in spring, and they'll be golden. All the flashy stuff already happened in the laning phase with Doublelift Level 1, with the bindings from Ole, and TSM are the ones continually ask the question, what are you going to do to find your way back into this game? Because the avenues available to you are very quickly closing. Well, with Rift Rivals only a couple weeks away, we're constantly looking at the North American teams that are going to uh, be representing North America there, Team Liquid. Um, definitely, this is the way that you would want to enter another international tournament. Uh, looking much, much stronger here after the small hiccup that they had early on in the split. TSM again, just trying to get some vision, but Team Liquid is playing very patient. Jerkson does get tagged by a W. 
No uh, massive surge of AP just yet for Double Lift. No Zonius, which you've seen. No Rabidon, which is also something uh -huh. you commonly see, but it's gonna okay. get there. Again, under said one, but pretty tanky. Mythic forced to burn a stopwatch. Gonna dance back away. Oh, he's gonna miss from McSmithy, but he's still unstoppable. His impact also looking for a couple stuns. Pobelta looking for the long flank. And not gonna go for it. Yeah, a lot of damage kind of taken there by the front lines. Everybody backs off for now. There is an Ocean Drake on Team Liquid's side, so Smithy should be able to heal up. Uh, whereas TSM going to have slight health deficits as they go to face check. Yeah, it's finally time for TSM to make a move. Liquid will force their hand. Whoop. Impact hanging out in a brush. There's no vision they can get. Green going to try and run in. He's got his flash. He's going to try and go for a steal. Baron is over. Team Liquid will take the fight. They'll take down Greek. Impact low, but he's got a DA. He'll revive as his team finishes off the Baron. And now Zobolin, killer instinct over the wall. He's looking to clean everybody up. He grabs one. He's going to make it two. Now Bjergsen is in his eyes for the triple kill, but it's Poe Belter dancing forward oh. into the stun. Impact gets it over. Poe Belter outplays. The mid lane. After some strong laning from Team Liquid, there's finally a half-hearted team fight, but it is too little too late. Baron picked up for TL, five members strong, running through the TSM base. Might just be enough to close the game out right now. They are so far ahead in gold. They've been so good around the map, and these Nexus turrets will mount Liquid. They may have started their season with one slip up, but they are back to business as usual, and business is good. Business is very good today for Team Liquid. And that's kind of the thing. I, I got flashbacks from their run in spring, from their, <laughs> like, playoffs and how well they played in their finals. It's like they had so many ups and downs. And when they finally figured it out, Liquid looked untouchable and rightly won the split. It's only near the end of week two, Kobe, and Liquid already feel like they're back to form. That is a scary prospect. Yeah, I mean, people's opinions change so quickly here with best of ones. You know, you, you get beat by Golden Guardians one game, everyone's, oh, super worried. Ah, oh, they can't play Vladimir. And then, I mean, they can't play Vladimir, at least not in the bot lane. <laughs> and you win, uh, win one here uh, in very convincing fashion versus TSM, and all of a sudden, the scales swing back the other way. Well, double if with that. Deserved smile, but Liquid know that so long season ahead for TSM. It's the same, showing a lot of good, but certainly some hiccups here in the start of their season as they try and put together their roster. Grig joining a team. Still feels like they're integrating the changes there in spring. Kind of a lot to think about, but to give us some insight on that game, we're going to send it over to Ovali and Team Liquid's Blade Dancer in the mid lane. Thanks, guys. Pobelter, congratulations on that win. With that victory, you guys are now floating around in the top of the standings. Before we started the interview, you just said that now everyone's going to think you got carried. What did you think of your performance today? Uh, I think I just did my job, but I just looked at the damage charts, and I dealt, like, almost no damage, and I think I'm the only one on our team that died, so... So that, that feels bad. What a feeder. But I want to ask you, we just started the spring split. What are your goals looking forward? Um... Our goal is to win. What about you personally? Any self-improvement? Um, <laughs> uh, this split, I wanted to practice a lot more, being comfortable taking like bigger risks, because at MSI, I don't think I was that comfortable playing really aggressively and testing my limits. And then I kind of realized, like, you know, you, you could just have to be OK with taking like 50-50 plays and just trusting that your mechanics are going to be better. So. Uh, that's like kind of a bad mindset sometimes when the best thing to do in game is to just play as safe as possible and then just like if your team is winning, you're going to win. So there's like a limit, of course. I'm not going to like throw the game randomly for my team, but that's, that's like my own personal goal. Well, congratulations again on the win. And for more on the game, let's hear from the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Avali. Team Liquid picking up the win here over TSM, moving to three and one. First thing I want to take a look at is the team compositions. We did see that Aurelia fall into the hands of Poe Belter. More so what that means is that Bjergsen was relegated to the Lulu of all picks there in the mid lane. Yeah, doesn't really make a lot of sense as a holistic unit. Like Lulu Olaf, good skirmishing 1v2 or a 2v2 in the yeah. early mid game. Olaf's very strong. Then you can buff up the Aatrox if you're diving in there. 
But like, where's the damage come from in right. this comp? You're gonna get outscaled by Kaisa. The Aurelia is gonna become a more yeah. useful 1v1 champion than Lulu. The Renekton Aatrox, like that's your one advantage in the entire map. And then if things don't go well, you have nothing else to fall back on, which is what happened this right. game. Impact winning the CS battle in the top lane. Down in the bot lane, as Pobelter mentioned, his team was really the ones doing the work while he went along for the ride. Ole coming up big on the Morgana signature pick, binding after binding landing. Yeah, and even after the level one with the flash being down for Sven made these all the more threatening. It gave them a huge advantage early on in the lane. You can see just under turret kill. Here he weaves around the outside of the minion. Mithy doesn't want to juke towards the Kai'Sa, jukes up. Another kill. It was pretty brutal for the TSM bottom lane, but Ole has had Morgana as his signature pick for a while. Anytime he can get his hands on it, it's always good to see what he can do. Our next slice of gameplay comes around the Baron pit an ace to follow. Let's pull that one up and talk our way through it. Yeah, I mean, this was a, a lot later in the game where TL just kind of grinded them down, made better plays over time. And this isn't like a super clean turn where half the people on TL are on the Baron, some people are over the wall scaring them away, but they have the GA to protect him. They finish the Baron off, and then they're just so far ahead. They hop the wall, kill everyone. It's There's no way TSM yeah. can even team fight them. And then the game's over right after yeah. this. They just run it up mid. They're down Dublin, Infernal Drakes. The Baron's gone. I mean, TL had a pretty sound victory here, all things considered. As you saw, Poe Belter was the only one to even die on the team. Nine kills for the rest of them. Like, it, it wasn't close. Uh, we think TL outdrafted them. TL had a better early game. TL had better macro. TSM didn't make really any moves that would pull them back into it. Right. It was a really sound win for TL. Yeah, and, and the both of you had predicted TSM to win this game, citing consistency in the play that you had seen up to this point in the first three games. but. I mean, wh where did it all fall apart? I mean, you already told me they got out drafted and then mm -hmm. didn't have anything to do in the early game. Where was the source of recourse for TSM in this game? I don't know. That's the tough thing is because sometimes yeah. you do your prediction and, you know, the optic FlyQuest game happens and it's crazy and the drafts aren't what you thought they are going to be. This time around, I didn't like TSM's draft, but just based off what you saw out of them this game, it's not like I would have re-bet on them if they got a better draft. Like, I thought TL looked much, much better. Just so, looked stronger. Yeah, yeah. If, you, if I could go back knowing this and TL, TSM gets a better draft, I'm still taking TL because gotcha. they looked super good this game. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. So you're telling me that what uh, TL showcased in this, point, in this game actually bumps them kind of above in your power ranking regardless of draft in, in, per se. Yeah, there, there's two things going on, right? It's Team Liquid now. This is the third game where they've had a well-thought-out bot lane duo with... Bjergsen on a marksman and Ole on a support. And coming into the season, maybe even coming into this game, I wasn't sold on Ole's synergy with Doublelift because mm. of what happened at MSI. I think it's fine. I think they're actually playing very well. And then trying to think about what I was thinking was going to be positive for TSM, I think, okay, Bjergsen and Grig have actually looked really good together. Zven and Mithy have always been solid, and Hauntzer wins most 1v1 matchups. I'm like, and great. none of those things happen. None happened. of those things happen, but I also don't know if they're going to happen yeah. in the mm. future because it's it failed against Clutch. It failed here. The FlyQuest win was their one impressive win. They were down 5,000 gold against CLG before getting a miracle fight. They didn't make semifinals in spring, right? The alarm bells really are kind of... I'm listening to them now rather than just seeing <laughs> yeah, yeah. them. You heard them, like, but you were ah, ignoring no, no, no. them. No, it's, TSM's yeah. got this. Just give them some time to recover. Just wait until later in the season. It's becoming pretty... I'm, I'm, I'm becoming a pretty big they're, skeptic. They're, we're too, but it's scary. Yeah, they, they've always been a, not super proactive in the early game, and, but we were saying, like, oh, well, they found their way to not be super proactive in the metagame right. and still scale and be good. But it's it's this, like Jat's saying, there's been so many early games now where they don't come out ahead with any discernible leads and you're not guaranteed better than teams in the late game now. Right. How do you win? Jet, if I'm trying to pull from trends over four games, I'm looking <laughs> at uh, the two wins coming on Aurelia, <laughs> yeah. the two losses coming on picks like Anivia and the Lulu here. Uh, Anivia and Lulu both speak to me as being less proactive in a sense. Yeah. Lulu can get out of the lane, I suppose, uh, but the Aurelia pick, maybe where that kind of mid-jungle duo was really shining, but then as soon as that pick gets removed, first you know, first rotation by Team Liquid, does Bjergsen not have another, another champion to play in the current meta? Well, Lulu, I think everyone's trying to figure out what that pick should be yeah. in the mid lane. I think... Honestly, when you're up against Aurelia, the melees have actually been the only things that have seemed effective. It looks like Aurelia punishes and disables almost any ranged one. Uh, but there's there's still a lot of stuff going on for TSM. And 
it's the curse of playing best of ones. It's so difficult to try and put together the big picture because this could also just be Team Liquid being really good. They're the defending say. champions of the NALCS and they smash people in the playoffs. So they played really well. It's just been a lot of mishaps for TSM. TL living up to their title here to move to three and one at the end of week two. We're stepping away when we return. It's Clutch and Counter Logic Gaming brawling it out in game four. Don't go anywhere. Oops, that's where you are shaking my monitor a little bit there with your foot. Yeah, sorry. I drank like half a rebel, so now I'm really insane. Oh shit, you're fucking online? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, now I can't pull it up. Oh, they collecting max value to support item. And again, damn it, back and up! Just an easy kill on Timothy. Got back needs a little bit more charging on some fury, but Honda trying to fight. Oh, not enough as impact takes him down. I'm going at Truth. Hey, I'm going at Truth. Yeah, Truth behind. He dead, he dead, he dead. Nice. Three seconds, three seconds. seconds. No yeah. flash, no flash, no flash. Yeah, he's dead. Uh, okay. We can end, we can end. Ooh. Nice, clean, fucking clean. Let's Liquid, they may have started their season with one slip up, but they are back to business as usual, and business is good. Welcome back to Assist of the Week. During CLG versus 100 Thieves, we saw CLG chase 100 Thieves up in the top lane. For a moment, it looked like 100 Thieves would get away. Then, Darshan unleashed Call of the Forge God, hitting a brain-rattling three-man knockup that allows CLG to secure all three kills. So Ryu with the smike and a force and ult out. Here comes the TP with the ult oh. from Darshan. Gonna line them all up. He gets a three-man knockup at CLG. Wipe that team. The sub above difference is legendary. With Jersey Mike's, throwing an unforgettable party is easy. Now this is a party. Jersey Mike's, be a sub above.